Hi everybody, welcome to Elementary Classical Mechanics, the subject where observing the universe suggests new mathematical and computational approaches that can literally transform our way of modeling and predicting any aspect of the world. Welcome back. In this lecture, we're going to begin chapter six, projectiles constrain motion and friction. So in the first lecture, I just want to set the stage with terminology for what we're going to use in solving problems once we've set up Newton's second law, the ordinary differential equations appropriately so that we can integrate them and get the motion. So projectiles, what's a projectile? For us, it's gonna be a particle of mass m and we're going to project it up. So we have a coordinate system, i, j, k. We're gonna give our projectile an initial velocity in the i, j, and k direction. So I said project it up. I mean, it doesn't have to have a k component. It could be projected along the horizontal, but you get the idea. Giving a particle of mass m an initial velocity and then see what happens. So weight and acceleration due to gravity. So it's experimentally determined that near the Earth's surface, all particles experience the same acceleration due to gravity. We call that g. And its magnitude is 9.8 meters per second squared. OK, and we're going to look at small pieces of the Earth, not the full spherical Earth. So we'll approximate it by a plane, and the k direction will be vertical to that uh, planar piece of the surface of the Earth. And so the weight of a particle is the acceleration of gravity acting on the mass, minus mgk. That's weight as a vector, and its magnitude will just be mg. OK, now, and so that's the picture we have in mind. For, excel for gravity acting on a particle. And that's going to come up in a lot of the problems we, we look at in this chapter. So we're going to look at constrained motion. So this is the situation where a particle is forced, that's a good word, to move along a curve or surface. OK, and gravity is going to be uh, one of the forces that's acting in that case. But you could imagine the uh, particle being forced to move along a curve or surface. And in that situation, this is where one of the places we're going to use Newton's third law. The particle exerts a force on the constraint. And by Newton's third law, the constraint exerts a force on the particle, equal and opposite. OK, this force is called the reaction force, the reaction of the constraint on the particle. And we break it up into two components. One is a normal component, a component normal to the motion. We call it n, the normal component. And a part parallel to the motion, we'll call that f. OK, and we can always do that. We can break up the vector however we want. And thinking about that coordinate system early on specific to a space curve, the tangent, the principal normal, and the binormal, that'll give you a good idea of how that might be used in this case. Friction. OK. In the constrained motion of a particle, a common force parallel to the uh, motion of the particle is referred to as friction. And that generally tends to act in an opposite direction to the motion of the particle. OK, and the magnitude of the frictional force empirically obeys this law. It's proportional to the normal force. The proportionality constant is called mu, the coefficient of friction. And this works pretty well in a lot of cases. But friction is a very complicated force that we don't really understand entirely yet. But uh, 
that's a subject in its own right. Okay, so that's a good introduction to these ideas, and we will use them in the solution of three problems that make up the rest of this chapter. So bye for now.